So this hold, it's not just the Joint Chiefs chairman. It's we don't have a Senate confirmed Marine commandant for the first time since the 1800s. Yeah, that's how you know long it's been. And it's really pretty extraordinary because as Secretary Austin was saying, this affects families. It affects morale and readiness because families, if someone is not promoted, they can't move to their next post. Therefore, their house, their base lodging is not vacated for the next team to come in, the next family to come in, children, schooling, spouses. No, I, I totally agree with you. And there are literally over uh, 250 promotions that are not being moved up. And so this really puts our readiness at stake. This puts our readiness in our domestic security, our national security, and our global security. Because when people can't move, first of all, a lot of anxiety for the family, the spouses or partners may be changing jobs, the kids are changing schools. But our adversaries are watching. People in these key positions with this knowledge of our national security, uh, whether it's the Marines, the Army, our national security agencies, this puts us at extreme risk, at extreme vulnerability. And Senator Tuberville is doing this for purely political reasons. Uh, we urge him to take off his hold. If he says he's a patriot, then he understands what this means, and he'll remove his hold. And meanwhile, in the House, there are all sorts of amendments now being put up uh, on cultural issues, diversity, uh, transgender troops, as well as abortion reproductive rights. So that the defense appropriations bill is now bogged down in that. Well, you know, I think this is inherently wrong. We have a national defense strategy. We have all of our servicemen and women in place to protect our country. If everyone says they're a patriot, then they're going to support our military and the mission that they have to take care of us. And we can have these discussions, these policy discussions that are domestic, but we need to have them in another space. And I, I, I was going to ask you also about the 2024 campaign, because yeah. now you're up for re-election and you've got a challenger, a declared challenger in Sam Brown, his former army captain. Um, so how does this, you know, affect the politics back home? Well, it's going to be a very crowded and messy primary because that's Nevada. Races are always tough. Races are always tight. But let's be clear, I have tremendous respect for Sam Brown, his military service, and his family's military service. But this race is going to be about policy. And what I can show is I'm in two top 10 lists I'm very proud of. I'm one of the top 10 most bipartisan senators, and I'm in the, one of the top 10 most effective Democratic senators. We've been delivering for Nevada families when it comes to veterans. We're bringing a new veterans hospital to the Reno area. We brought, I brought the first veterans uh, outreach center, business outreach center, working with our newly formed Veterans Chamber of Commerce uh, to Nevada. And we're working on veteran cybersecurity to protect their data and their information. And the most important, we passed, I helped pass the PACT Act. And so when it comes to veterans, we've been very busy uh, delivering for them. This race is going to be about policy. All my opponents, extreme, MAGA, uh, they're outside the mainstream of Nevada. They believe in the big lie. They believe in a nationwide abortion ban, and they believe in eliminating some of our agencies like the Department of Education, him and Jim Marchant both.